Hey guys, this is Mike the Scrapper, and I bought a lot at an auction. This is, as you can see from the pictures, there are some CRT monitors, there are computer towers, and some other stuff. Now, it took the back of my truck and also the whole back seat. So now for this video, we're just going to scrap the computer towers. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you what I paid for the entire lot, what the entire computer tower cost, everything I took apart, and then the profit I made just on the computer towers alone. So let's take a look at this. So we're going to get started with some of these computers. Now here you see four Dells, but there are others. So let's start with this. Let's say you're taking apart a computer, but you want to keep the parts. You can use what they call a ESD wrist strap. You just put it on your wrist and the alligator clip connects to your tower. The next one is a mat. I can't show you the whole map, but I'll leave a description in the link below. Again, you can put the components on this and you prevent from getting an ESD. The next way of doing it is just touching the outside or the inside of the computer cover without gloves on. That will take the charge off your hands so when you touch something you won't get, like I said, shock the components inside. So let's get started and let's take apart our first computer tower. Sometimes these power supplies are amazingly difficult to remove because each manufacturer wanted to make their own design instead of making just one simple design they decided to make all these different changes in the beginning but now if you look at computer towers that you can build yourself you can see the architecture and how beautiful they look, especially if you have a plexiglass screen on the side where you can actually look inside the computer. It's amazing. And I'm building one myself, so hopefully in the next few videos, I'll be able to show it to you once it's all done. Now these are brass inserts that are put there to hold your motherboard and we're going to take those apart. Now you also want to keep some of the screws and put them like in a maybe separate them in a, one of those little vitamin containers so you can use them later.
Now I think these computers are called Slims because you can put like your uh, monitor right on top of them. Now it's just amazing the design on these of how small they are and the the way you can just cram everything in there into that little box. I always worried about airflow, but I guess they they got the design down to keep it from overheating. At the end of the video, when I show you the price list, you'll see what all these parts are. If you're new to scrapping computers or new to scrapping metal, Now this is a heat sink that has copper and aluminum. I'll show you how to remove that later if you want to sell them separate. If you like the video so far, hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Now I usually vacuum computers that have all that we call them uh, dust bunnies. So that'll give you like uh, maybe a little allergy. It'll make you start sneezing. And it's pretty gross too, because just thinking about what, what's a dust bunny, it's pretty much human skin, hair, and some other stuff from the environment, which is like bleh, pretty gross. It's always interesting to see a new design in computers. Because every time you take apart a computer, it's usually never the same. There's usually something different in each computer, unless it's the same model.
Now everything you see me taking apart here, I won't be using it again. This will all be sold as scrap metal. Now some scrap yards don't want that piece of steel on the motherboard because it adds more weight, so we'll just remove it. Like I said about those designs, they are extremely difficult. And as you can see, these had screws in the front. If I would have known that earlier or taken a few minutes to inspect the tower, I would have known that. But we're scrappers and we're always in a hurry. So now the gloves have come off. I'm getting a little tired of doing all these computers. It's a lot to organize the parts while you're filming. If I was just scrapping these, it'd be not a problem. But it takes a lot longer to separate the power supplies, the RAM, the motherboards by category, the disk drives, the floppies, the zip drives, and the CPUs. Not to mention all the metal towers and all the parts that go with that.
so now I have taken the hammer because I have become so frustrated taking these apart because I'm running out of room that I decided just to leave everything on the bench right next to each other and try to get this done as quickly as possible. But with all the stripping and separating and filming, it's taken me over a week just to film these 11, 12 computers. It's almost comical to see <laughs> how the boards are being treated. Like I said before, these are not going to be reused. They're going to be recycled. Just imagine someone at a computer store taking your computer apart and doing that to it. So now this is it. This is what I mean about taking everything apart and organizing them. This is a lot of stuff. So now we're gonna be taking these zip drives, DVD drives, floppy drives apart so you can see what's in them and I can include them in a price list. And again, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If it's your first time watching my videos, please hit that subscribe button. In the price list, I'll show you more of what these are because this is in everything. Now it's up to you if you want to take apart these items, but you'll see in the price list of what they cost per pound and if it's worth your time taking them apart.
Now in this one, I don't take apart all the CD drives, but I do show you at the end what they look like taken apart. I think there are two motors on these and two boards. Now these are interesting. These are called zip drives. And I haven't taken apart one in a long time, so I forgot what they look like inside. On this board you see those little yellow boxes that's actually tantalum and I looked at the board itself it looks like a logic board from a hard drive so I sent a picture to my friend at boardsort.com and he tells me those boards are CD CD drive boards that's what they'll go as Now for you that are learning new things about computers, this is an old Pentium uh, CPU. And we're going to remove the board itself. That board is called a slot processor. And if you saw that little yellow box, that's a piece of tantalum. Now this is that aluminum heatsink I showed you earlier. And it's just glued on and I'm going to show you how to remove it. I'm going to use a chisel and a hammer. And companies will pay you for them both intact. But if you wanted to separate them, this is how you would do it. Also, wear safety glasses when you're doing things like this. You don't want a piece of aluminum or copper to chip to hit you in the face or take out one of your eyes. Now, this was that hard drive I took apart. It's only it's a small one, 6.4 gigabytes, and it's also an IDE drive. I have other videos that explain what's an IDE drive and a SATA. Now, the majority of the prices I got, I got them from BoardSword.com. So if you want to sell your items, sell them at BoardSword.com. I'll leave a link in the description below.
All right, guys, that's a lot of money. I paid $11.25 for the entire lot. Now, I just took apart the computer towers and look how much money I made. So now there's some other stuff there. Like I said, CRT monitors, there is a laptop, there's a battery backup and some other stuff there. So stay tuned for the next video or videos so you can see how much more money I'll make on this entire lot. If you're new, click that subscribe button. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And as always, guys, this is Mike the Scrapper. Please comment, like, subscribe. Till then, peace.